Hello everyone, my name is Andrei Dima and today I'm going to review the Fujifilm X-T4 which I have been using in the last 8 months in my travels around Spain. And today I'm going to tell you about my experience with the Fuji X-T4. I will start with the build quality, which I think is great. It is weather sealed and I had no problems with it when shooting in the rain or humid conditions. I used it for video and photo in light rain, but I wouldn't use it in heavy rain. In this period of time I had no problems with the eyepiece, buttons or side doors or with the tiltable LCD screen. I even dropped it two times and it is still ok. The only thing are these scratches on the bottom from the tripod and gimbal plates. You have two memory card slots, this is one of the things that made me buy this camera and not the Nikon Z6, being a Nikon user for 10 years now. You have no headphone jack but you have a USB-C port and Fuji gives you an USB-C to jack adapter so I don't mind this. The tiltable LCD screen is great for video, vlogging and taking photos in different angles and it is nice that you can turn it around like this to protect it. I like all the buttons and how they feel when pressed except the shutter button which is a bit squishy. The joystick is small but very easy and nice to use. One of my favorite things about this camera is the mode dial switch between photo mode and video mode. The viewfinder has nice resolution and it is bright enough, the refresh rate is great but this depends on what mode your camera is in. I keep it in boost mode to get the best refresh rate. And you have a lot of customizable buttons, which any professional camera should have. The grip is small, but ok to hold. I have no issues with it. It's not as nice as on other cameras, but it is a decent grip. And finally the battery, which is bigger than the one on the X-T3, and thank god for that, <laughs> that battery was awful for a person coming from DSLR like me. But the one on the X-T4 is great, you can take around 800 photos and 2 hours of video depending on what settings you use. Now let's talk about image quality and dynamic range. I think the Fujifilm X-T4 is a great camera on this department. I think there is no APS-C sensor camera like this one. I know you want to know how it compares with a full frame. In my opinion it is on par with most 24 megapixels full frames until ISO 3200. And it has nicer color science than most. The JPEGs coming out of the Fujifilm X-T4 are amazing and if you use the latest version of Capture One or Lightroom you are going to get amazing results out of your RAW files. As you can see in the photos above, see how well you can recover the shadows and highlights? Fujifilm did an amazing job with this sensor. The film simulations coming with the camera are great. The ones I use the most are Eterna Profile, Classic Chrome and Astia Soft. Astia Soft is great for landscape. The resolution of the sensor will show you great results if it is paired with good quality glass. This applies to all cameras. You have a lot of options for photography at your disposal on this camera. It shoots 15 frames per second mechanical, 20 frames per second with silent electronic shutter and 30 frames per second with silent electronic shutter and 1.25 crop. You can take handheld panoramas which is fun to play with. I still prefer to stitch manually my panoramas. And you have interval shooting for time lapses. And you have a great auto mode on photo stacking. You thought I forgot to show you the film simulations. Well, here they are. And one last thing. The Fuji X-T4 has the quietest mechanical shutter I have ever heard. All these film simulations are great if you're not planning on editing your photos before uploading them to Instagram, let's say.
Another thing I like is the noise that the Fuji Film X-T4 produces at higher ISOs. As you can see in these photos that were taken at ISO 2800. Now let's talk about autofocus. First, autofocus for photos. The Fujifilm X-T4 autofocus is very customizable. You have face tracking, eye tracking, normal tracking. And the cool thing about this, you can use them all in one when you put your camera in continuous focus and tracking. I usually use single point autofocus, but this is a great option for sports or when you document your family or take photos of your pets. The autofocus works well in almost all conditions, even in low light. The eye tracking sometimes jumps in the back. It looks like it sees eyes in detailed textures and trees. I hoped that Fuji would have fixed this after 4 updates, but they did not. This applies more in video. Otherwise, the focus is fast and precise, but this depends on your lens as well. The autofocus for video is decent and it depends a lot on your lens. Most of Fuji lenses were created with photography in mind, but Fuji has started to improve this. The eye detect works, but how I said earlier, it jumps sometimes, seeing eyes where they are not. <laughs> Try filming with a not too crowded background and right eye detect worked better for me in video than the normal. Now let's talk about video. This is the second thing that made me buy this camera and not the Nikon Z6 or Z7. This camera has some great video features. The most important for me is the 10-bit color. This makes footage easy to color grade and not get posterization and noise. The second is the 4K at 60 frames per second, which when using you get a small crop, but it's not a big deal. This combined with the great EBIS, which I will talk about later, can give you some gimbal-like footage, as you can see in this handheld footage. For me, the EBIS performed the best when digital stabilization was off and boost off, just the normal EBIS. And then I added a bit of stabilization in post. You can record in all intra or long GOP, you can record up to 400 megabytes per second and you can record 1080p at 240 frames per second, which is a bit soft, but still great to have. I think 1080p 120 is higher quality, as you can see in this clip with my friend Alex. The log profile of the Fujifilm X-T4 is great for high contrast scenes and it is very easy to color grade as you can see in this clip. And another cool thing it has dual native ISO when recording in F-Log, just in F-Log. This means you have two base ISOs, one at 640 and one at 2000. As you can see, the ISO 1600 footage has more noise than the ISO 2000 footage. I made a video explaining the dual native ISO and you can watch it here. So yes, this camera is great when it comes to low light. I recommend you start shooting at ISO 2000 in low light for cleaner video and higher dynamic range. In one of their many updates, Fuji improved the auto exposure of the Fujifilm X-T4. The exposure is not stepping when it's changing, it is a lot smoother. You can also see how smooth is the focus. Fuji provides a lot of updates for their cameras and I hope in the future they will fix the problem with the eye detect on the Fujifilm X-T4 and X-T3. And one more important thing, it has great dynamic range. Now let's talk about EBIS. 
In my opinion, it is one of the best I have used so far. For photos, is amazing. You can get photos down to 1 over 6th of a second with no blur. This is great for low light conditions. And for video, is just as good as you can see in these clips. The Fujifilm X-T4 is very easy to pair with a small gimbal. I have used the X-T4 with the Zion Webill S and had great results. This is a great travel combo. The Fujifilm X-T4 is a do-it-all camera. It is light, well-built, it has tons of features for photo and video, great battery, Fuji provides good range of lenses for the X-mount, and if you don't like those, Viltox has some great cheap options as well. I am glad I bought this camera over other models that released this year. It is a fun camera to use. I enjoyed every minute of using it. I don't know what it is about the Fujifilm X-T4, but it lit the spark to create again. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. This helps me grow my channel and make more useful videos. And if you like my photos, check out my presets pack in the description below. See you soon.